Hello everybody, happy Tuesday morning. Here we are here with All In LA, All In Los Angeles Sports Talk Radio. Our phone number to call in today is 1-866-151-4200. That's 1-866-151-4200. Please feel free to call in. Today we're going to talk about the Rams and Jared Goff. We're going to talk about the Heisman Trophy race for this upcoming college football season. And we're going to talk about the Dodgers. The problems with Yasel Puig, and are Josh Reddick and Rich Hill really the answer for this team's problems? So, I'm here with my co-hosts, Keenan Albin and Adam Glick. I think we're going to start off today with the Rams. How do you feel about the Rams and Jared Goff? Looking back on the trade that they made three months ago to go up to number one to get him, they gave up a lot to go get him. They gave up the number, one, the number 15 overall pick in this year's draft the number 43 and 45 overall picks in the second round of this year's draft, and a third round pick also in this year's draft. And then they also gave up their first and third round picks in next year's draft to go get a kid with tremendous upside. He has great accuracy. He's, he's shown that he can make big plays. He, he played great in Cal's bowl game. He, he has a lot of potential. He's smart, but he has a lot of problems too. He threw five picks in an early season game against Utah last year. He has small hands, and um, he, he's shown consistently that he can play. He hasn't shown the consistency that he needs to be a, a standout NFL quarterback. Keenan, I have a question for you. Do you think he's, the fu- he's capable of handling the future because they gave up so much to get him? I don't think he has the potential enough to be the future of the Rams organization. That's a good point, Adam. I think he's capable of being the future of the Rams organization, but I don't think that it's certain that he will be the the future. So giving up all of these picks to go get him really isn't worth it because they they got Goff in round one, and they didn't even have another pick until round four where they got Farrah Cooper, the wide receiver out of South Carolina. I think something really important to look at here is just their decision to – start Case Keenum this season over Jared Goff, at least in the beginning of the season. And obviously, he's a rookie quarterback. He's got some time to develop. And uh, this way, he'll be able to uh, develop more under Case Keenum. But in my opinion, when you're a team that's as troubled as the Rams and you need an answer at quarterback and you draft someone number one overall, you should really draft a guy that you're going to start first week. And it doesn't seem like they've done that. So we've got a call in. Can you please tell us your name? My name is Jake. All right, Jake, are you from L.A.? Yes, I am. Awesome. What do you have to say about the Jared Goff situation? Well, obviously, Jared Goff was starting as a freshman at college, at the college level. And at first, he struggled a little bit. And at the end of the season, and upcoming for the upcoming season for his college years, he started to win. Spoiler was probably one of the more accurate quarterbacks in football. So giving up all these picks for the Rams, I think it's worth it with Todd Gurley there. So just giving up all those picks, I think it was the right decision. All right. Thank you for the call. So we've got a caller who thinks it was the right decision. And – I definitely agree with him on some basis. I think he's got great potential. But I also think that uh, I'm also a little surprised that they're not going to be starting him first week. Also, I don't think, I don't think what, the, what the caller said about um, you know pairing, pairing him with Todd Gurley gives them, a, gives them a good future in L.A. Because looking at the Rams last year, they're not a team that's a quarterback away from winning a Super Bowl. They have many other holes in the team. I know they have the great D line with Robert Quinn, William Hayes, Aaron Donald, but they really have holes in the secondary, and they lost Janoris Jenkins to the New York Giants. So mm-hmm. they really they, they have a lot more holes than just quarterback, and giving up all these draft picks hurts their ability to go get those guys in the draft. I think that's a great point. We've got just a little bit of time left, so I think that we should just talk really, really quickly about Josh Reddick and Rich Hill on the Dodgers. Yeah, they got him in the uh, trade deadline to fill in some gaps in the outfield, getting uh, Josh Reddick of the Oakland A's and Rich Hill of the Oakland A's as well as the pitching staff. Rich Hill has an ERA in the twos, 2.28, 9-3 on the season. He's a very good pitcher. He has been in the league for a little bit, and he is definitely has potential to fill the Dodgers' rotation come the playoff time. 
They got Josh Reddick in the outfield, you know, replacing Puig, the whole situation about him going down AAA. I mean, Reddick, he's old, but, you know, maybe he'll do the job. I think Dodgers need to do a little more uh, during the trade deadline. Great points. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone, today to All in L.A. Now we're going to head to uh, the news. For me, Thomas Maloney, and my partners Adam Glick and Keenan Allen, thank you for listening. Welcome to All in Sports. I'm Adam Glick. Along my side is Thomas Maloney and Jake Fitzgerald. We have a great show for you today. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning in Los Angeles, and our number to call in today is one 866 151 4200. We have some good topics to talk about today. We have the Heisman, who is going to contend for the Heisman this year in the college football 2016 2017 season. And we have the Olympics. Is Michael Phelps the best Olympian ever? Let's get to Thomas Maloney on the Heisman. Who are your favorites? Who, who do you like? I really, really like Deshaun Watson this year. I think he obviously has extraordinary talent. He led Clemson to the national championship last year. They were the number one team coming into the playoff. And he's coming into another season where he almost won it last season. And I definitely think he needs to be a front runner this season. Next, you have Leonard Fournette running back from LSU. He is a bruising running back, but he's got a lot of speed as well. He is the main part of that LSU offense. And he's a dynamic runner, even in the tough defensive lines of the SEC. I think he's a front runner to look at. Um, there's a lot of other guys you can look at. Baker Mayfield out of Oklahoma is another one. But I think a dark horse that isn't getting enough attention is the running back of Oklahoma, Samaje Perrine. He obviously had his one game last season where he broke the NCAA record for rushing yards in a game. And that really stood out to me just how well he ran. And it wasn't against a terrible defense. I mean, every defense in the, B, in the uh, Big 12 is terrible to a certain extent. But um, it wasn't one of the worst defenses in the Big 12. And I think that Samaj Perrine, if he doesn't have any injuries, he could be an incredible running back this season and he could contend for a Heisman. Jake, your thoughts? One of my favorites for the Heisman is Christian McCaffrey from Stanford. Christian McCaffrey is a speed running back who can catch the ball at the backfield and who can also return punts and kicks. If you saw him in the Rose Bowl last year, he had a ton of all-purpose yards from punts, kicks, catching the ball, and even rushing. So he's one of my favorites because they lost Kevin Hogan, so they're going to rely on him a lot more this year. Yeah, I like McCaffrey too. He's a veteran and he plays for a good Stanford team. And uh, we have a caller. Hello, where are you from? I'm from Los Angeles, California. And what's your name, sir? Keenan. Welcome, Keenan. What, what do you want to talk about today? Well, I was going to say that I think Deshaun Watson's going to win the Heisman Trophy. That, that's a good because pick. Because out of the three finalists from last year, he and Christian McCaffrey are the only two that are returning. And I don't think that Stanford has the pieces around Christian McCaffrey for him to repeat what he did last year. That's a very good analysis. I mean, it's going to be a great Heisman race. There's a lot of players competing for it. And... Uh, McCaffrey and Watson are going to be two front runners, so it's going to be interesting to watch. Thank you for calling, Keen. And now let's go to our last topic really quickly, the Olympics. Michael Phelps has now won another medal in uh, swimming. He has 19 gold medals, 23 medals overall. Do you think he's the best Olympian? In my opinion, he is certainly the best Olympian of all time. And, you know, I have to admit that I certainly have a little bit of American bias there. But Michael Phelps has been so dominant for so many years. This is, I believe, his fifth Olympics. And he just keeps on winning gold medals over and over and over again. It's hard to argue with his dominance over the last 16 years in a really difficult sport. You make yeah. a good point. Jake? I have to agree with Thomas. Michael Phelps has worked very hard to get where he is. He works very hard for his parents to just prove everyone that he could do it. Very, very good Olympian. Yeah, Michael Phelps is a true Olympian. He represents the U.S. very well. Thank you for listening to All In L.A. Sports. This week we got to go to news and weather. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Good morning, and welcome to One Host, Two Arguers. I am Quinn Daly, and I am here with Matthew Paul and Joshua Feinhirsch. Today, Russell Westbrook re-signs with KD. Er, can we start? Guys in live air, if you make a mistake, you just keep rolling. Because nobody knows they're not watching. Oh, he made a mistake. So just you keep rolling like nothing happened. All right. Nobody will notice. Just correct right. yourself when you know you made a mistake. And if it's so glaringly silly, then you can laugh about it and say, uh, duh. We all know.
Okay, in that case. All case. Right. So I'm going to count you down again. All right, five. sorry. No, don't, no apologies. Five, four, three, two. Welcome to One Host, Two Arguers. I am Quinn Daly, and I am here with Matthew Paul and Joshua Feinhirsch. Today, is Matthew Fa did Michael Phelps get his gold? In his, is, it, is it Michael Phelps' last gold in the Olympics? I absolutely think it was Michael Phelps' last gold in the 100 relay, especially considering that he got second place in the 200 butterfly in his own heat, and he won't even be able to get second place with all the heat winners, more, m nonetheless first place. I completely disagree with you, Matthew, just because of Michael Phelps, probably one of the best Olympians of all time, most decorated, and this is not from my American bias standpoint. I think he can win another gold in these Olympics in the 200 meter butterfly. All right, Josh Norman to the Redskins, playing against OBJ, and who will win the battle? I think Odell Beckham will win this battle this year, especially because last year when they played against each other, Josh Norman had a great front seven that gave Eli Manning a lot less time to throw. But since he's on a worse defensive Redskins team, oh, wait, we have a caller on the topic. Hello? Hello? Well, I think that um, Odell Beckham will win this battle because last year Josh Norman had a much better defense and he still barely won, and this year he's on a worse defense. Well, however, I think that Josh Norman will win this battle just because he's a shutdown corner. He can follow you wherever you go on the football field, and he tried to get into Odell Beckham Jr.'s head the best that he could, and I think he could do that again this season. What do you think on the topic? I have to agree with you. I think Josh Norman will win this battle. I think he got the better of Odell Beckham last year, and I think he can do it again this year. Maybe not get in all the fights, but I think he can win the battle actual on the field football this time. All right, thank you, caller. All right, Russell Westbrook resigns. Did he give an indirect insult at KD? Yes, I feel that he did give a direct insult, indirect insult to Kevin Durant because Kevin Durant was being un, he was not being loyal and Russell Westbrook did call him out for it and I think that was an okay thing to do in my own opinion. And I, I also agree with Joshua. Russell Westbrook said when he re-signed loyalty was the most important thing and that's what Katie broke so I do think he gave him an indirect insult. All right, thank you guys. Oh, yeah. This is one host, two arguers, and thank you for. Oh, wait, what do I say? Is that it? Oh, see ya. Bye. Sorry, I didn't know what to do. Hey, I'm Noah Wheeler, and this is another episode of ESPN Face Off. Remember, you can always call us at 310 908 8886 or tweet us at, at ESPN Face Off. To my right, I got the main guy, Andrew Sefton, always outspoken. And to my left, I got the Dodger fanatic, if you'd call him, and Josh Mechanic. Today, we're going to be debating Kershaw's injury, T Tebow to the MLB, and possibly LeBron's greatness now that he is the new star. So, let's get right down to it. Now that Kershaw is on the DL list, Andrew, do you think that he can still be as efficient as he was before? Well, obviously Kershaw is, in my opinion, the best pitcher in baseball at the moment. And for him having a back injury, I think it will hold him back a little bit, but it will still perform at a high level because, you know, he is Clayton Kershaw. Good point. And you, Josh? Well, before Kershaw went on the DL, he was having the best season of his career. And that's saying something for the best pitcher in baseball. Now that he's on the DL, and he's been on the DL for a couple months, and he's not eligible to return until August 27th, I don't know if he'll be the same, but he'll still definitely be the best pitcher in baseball. Good point. And on our next topic, Tebow to the MLB. Just today, Tim Tebow got four, five offers from five professional MLB squads. Do you think this is an insult to baseball, Andrew? 
Well, I think Tim Tebow, as we all know, like about four years ago, he was the starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos and led them to the playoffs and ended up losing. Now, he got his two seconds of fame, and then he kind of got washed up, backed up a couple quarterbacks, went to the Jets, traveled to a bunch of teams. Now he was kind of a free agent. So I think a little, it's a little bit of a publicity stunt. I think he wants to get his name out there because... Um, okay. Good point, Andrew. And you, Josh? Well, I mean, Tim Tebow was an all-star baseball player in high school, and after all of his NFL experience and not really getting making a name for himself after his first couple seasons, he needs somewhere to be in. He was on college game day a couple times, but now he just needs to play a sport, and baseball is his second sport. So. Good point. And now for our last topic, LeBron has just won his third ring after beating the Golden State Warriors on his shoulders, basically. Do you guys think that LeBron is now among one of the greats and Michael Jordan? Uh, I think he is among the greats. I don't know if he's at Michael Jordan's caliber yet. He still has a couple years left in the tank. But for him winning um, his third ring, brought a ring to Cleveland, ended the drought, beat the Warriors, who were 73-9, and nine, had the best record ever in basketball history. And I think he carried his team and had one of the best playoff performances ever. So oh, I think but, but, but before you can go, Josh, I think we got a caller. Hello, sir. What's your name? Hello? Uh, hello. Uh, you're on ESPN Face Off, sir. Hi, I'm Blake from Los Angeles. Hey, Blake. How you doing? Pretty good today. So I wanted to talk about LeBron James. I think that LeBron is past his prime right now, and his career is actually spiraling to its finale. I think right now he's got a point where he's relying on other superstars to get to the top. He can't take his team to a championship by himself anymore because he's depleted. After all these years of wear and tear in the NBA playoffs, he's finally reached the point where he's settling back and rest during the regular season in order to perform at a high level in the postseason. I think that's just such a great point, Blake. Your response, Josh? Well, that's true because in the NBA Finals this year, Kyrie Irving really helped and he couldn't have, LeBron couldn't have won without Kyrie. And also in his other rings in Miami, D. Wade was a big key factor to those wins. So I yeah. think he's getting to the end of his career. Well, thanks so much, Blake. And this has been an episode of ESPN Faceoff. Thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hello, and welcome to Tyler and the Twins Talk Show. I'm your host, Van Nolan, along with Tyler Rawls and Owen Nolan. Our first topic for the day is, can Tim Tebow succeed in the MLB? If you haven't heard earlier today, he announced that he was going to have a tryout later this month in which all 30 teams plan on attending. Tyler, what are your thoughts on this topic? Um, so, Tim Tebow, if you don't know, he was a high school star in for baseball as well as football. He hit 494 in high school, and at a batting practice recently, he's been seen to be hitting balls up to just shy of 500 feet. So I think he can he can make it. I don't think he can be a star in MLB, but I think he can make it. Yeah. Oh, and your thoughts? I definitely think he could be a star. You mentioned he's hitting balls close to 500 feet. That's like Giancarlo Stanton type power. We saw what he did, especially winning the home run derby this past year. So I definitely think Tebow could make it as a baseball player. And also, you guys forgot to mention, he's a former quarterback. He's probably going to have a pretty good arm. That's I, true. I believe yeah. he plays outfield. He can throw any yeah. avenue. I would put him in right field, and I would have him catch the ball and throw it home every time. I bet he could get the majority of the runners out at home. Our next topic is, can the Cavaliers repeat as NBA champions? Tyler? Um... I think they definitely can. I'm not sure if they will. I think that they should be able to win the East. And if they do that, LeBron can definitely turn it on the finals and he probably can beat them. But I think if they I think they will end up playing the Warriors and I think the Warriors will have too much power and they'll beat them. I don't think they stand a chance at repeating even though I think they can win the East because the Warriors are so good. We have a caller on the line right now. Hello, what is your name? Hi, I'm Blake from Florida. Hello, Blake from Florida. Thank you for calling in on this morning, Tuesday morning. What is your question? Oh, I actually just got a statement today. I really, really think that this year surprised me enough 
year than the lot of the Clippers race through the Western Conference and reach the finals, eventually beating the Cleveland Cavaliers. Most would say that the Warriors are going to win it all this year. I think that the chemistry issues with Kevin Durant and Steph Curry are going to be a major flaw with that team. I think that the Spurs are old and washed up. Finally, in the year, the Blake and Griffin, Chris Paul, and DeAndre Jordan put it together with one of the best coaches of the league, Doc Rivers. What do you guys think of that bold prediction? I think it is a very bold prediction. Like I said, I think, though, throughout the year, by the time the playoffs come around, obviously the Warriors will be in the playoffs, regardless of what seed. I don't know if it really matters. A lot of people have them as the number one seed, but if their chemistry falters at the beginning, that could cost them. However, I think they are talented enough that by playoff time, they can run through the Western Conference, and I don't see any real threat to the Cavs in the East. Okay, well, thanks for having me on, Dad. Thank you. Thanks for your call. Our next topic is, will RG3 be a star again in the NFL? Yesterday, it was announced that he will be the Cleveland Brown starter for this upcoming season. Owen, what are your thoughts? I definitely think he can be a successful quarterback in the NFL. He proved that in his rookie year in Washington and has struggled a bit since then. He's battled a lot of injuries. But I definitely think as long as he stays healthy, he can be a productive quarterback in the NFL. Um, I definitely think he can be. A, uh, I don't think he can be a star, but I think he can be productive. If he stays healthy, he can be a decent quarterback, but he, I don't think the Browns will support him very well around that. But I think he can do okay. Yes, like you mentioned, I don't think the Browns have enough talent around him for him to do a lot this year. And thank you guys for listening to our show today. For my partners, Tyler Rawls and Owen Noland, I'm Van Noland. Have a good night. Hi, I'm Jake Austin with Bo Garvey and Caleb Strange on Slam Talk 94.8. Thanks for tuning in. Our phone number is 1-800-1800-948. Today we will be talking about Michael Phelps' gold medal record, the San Francisco Giants' World Series hopes, and the Warriors' offseason moves. Bo, what do you think about Michael Phelps' gold medal record? Personally, I think Michael Phelps can, can keep up his strength of 19 gold medals and counting. If he keeps up what he's doing, I don't think he'll get knocked off the spotlight. Call 1-800-180-0948 to, call, to list your opinion. And Katie Ledecky shattering her past world record, a new Michael Phelps, could she break her record once again? Thanks, Bo. Now, can the Giants continue the pattern and win the World Series once again? I don't think so. Even though they started out strong this year, there is proof they can lose after winning only two of their first 13 games after the All-Star break. And since they're only one game ahead of the Dodgers in their division, if they have another big losing streak, they might not even win their division. So they'd have to, uh, it would be a longer route to the World Series. And Caleb, what do you think about the Warriors' offseason moves? Well, I mean, the Warriors, they were dominant last season. You look at the guys, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, the guys who lead the team. You take a guy like Kevin Durant and you put him in that mix, the big four in Oakland, I think, are going to do a lot for this team. And I think the Warriors could go farther than 73-9, and nine, maybe 74-8, and eight, maybe 75-7. and seven. The Warriors will be dominant no matter what. They have really high hopes of getting into the playoffs. They could beat the King and his crew in the finals, and it could, they could win. We do have a caller on the line. What's your name, caller, and where are you from? Hi, uh, I'm Peter, I'm from Detroit, and I would like to talk about uh, what the Warriors have done this offseason. Now, of course, they've added Kevin Durant with a huge signing, but here's the problem. Look who they had to give up. Look who they gave up. They gave up some big-time uh, guys on the bench. They lost almost all of their bench from the 2014-2015 um, championship team. Now, that is true, but we did add Kevin Durant, who could take us to the NBA Finals again. Yes, but... Here's the thing, you just can't add one big time player and get rid of like get rid of five mediocre players. Now you have no bench. You guys have about 
We do have a bench. We do. We did add Zaza Pachulia and David West. Thank you for phoning in. Thanks for tuning in to Slam Talk. This has been Bo Garvey and Caleb Strange. I'm Jake Austin. Goodbye. Welcome to Sports Talk Radio on 710 AM. I am Allie Nickham here with Justin Borses and Jesse Rosiak. If you want to call in to discuss any of our topics, call 916-769-3600. The three topics for today are should A-Rod be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame, should USA athletes be credited down for not going to the Olympics because of the chance for obtaining the Zika virus, and does the NFL look bad for canceling the NFL Hall of Fame game? On to our first question. Jesse, what are your thoughts? He should definitely not be in because you don't know what was actually him and what were the drugs. And the Baseball Hall of Fame is a level playing field. He may have been the worst player in the MLB, but then he took drugs and became the best. You never know what he would be like. Personally, I think A-Rod is an egotistical scumbag, but he's going to be in the Hall of Fame because his numbers within the years that he did not supposedly take PEDs suggest that he would be in the Hall of Fame. We have a caller on the line. Hello, what is your name and where are you from? I'm sorry? What was that? I am Blake from New York. Hi Blake, how are you? Pretty good today. I just wanted to talk about that topic on a Ron. Um, my opinion on it is the fact that although he did admit to doing steroids, he's apologized. I feel like towards the tail end of his career, he became a better overall person, and due to that, I would like to forgive him, and I think he should be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Statistically, you look at his numbers, he's nearly got 700 home runs at 295 per year batting average, and over 2,000 runs batted in. He was one of the top 25 statistical players of all time. Due to that, and due to his apology, I believe he needs to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I agree with you because you know, when you look at a guy like Mike Piazza, he was borderline. There were some questions about him, but he ended up getting in anyway. And, you know, he's got a great career. Bonds, you look at him, they, he, everybody says he takes PEDs, and he probably did. But his numbers are just off the charts to the point where you cannot discount the numbers. And if the numbers suggest he should be in, and if that's what you're basing it on, then he should be in the hall as well. What do you think? Jesse? I, I still think that it should be a level playing field, so I still say no. Well, thank you for calling in. We appreciate your point of view. Thank you. All right, on to our next question about the Zika virus. Jesse, what are your thoughts? Well, I don't think they should be credited down because safety comes first. Would you rather someone be safe or have someone win a, a hundred gold medals? I would take safety first. As would I, because, you know, when you look at these people, these people are in their late 20s, mid-30s. These people still might want to have kids. And the child in question would be the basic, you know, it, you have to protect the kid. You know, it's a motherly, fatherly instinct. My parents do it. Your parents do it. And the kid comes first before anything. So if you want to have kids and you don't want to go to Rio because of the risk, I'm fine with that. Perfectly fine with that. All right, on to our last question. Does the NFL look bad for canceling the NFL Hall of Fame game? Yes, because here's my thing. If a game is canceled because of the weather, the NFL can't control that. But field conditions, they're the ones who put the paint on the field. So it's not the players' fault, it's the NFL's. No, the Dell makes a ton of money. Do you think he really needs this? Do you think the NFL really needs this? Nobody pays attention to the preseason. Not a soul. 
Not a soul pays attention to the preseason. They are always into the regular season, but whenever a preseason game is on, you might get 30% of the people tuning in. He, th there's no need. There's no need to watch this. Unless the Hall of Famers were playing in their 60s, you know, they're fat and old, they probably wouldn't be able to play anyway. Unless they were playing, you know, in their 60s, nobody would tune in, even for the nostalgia factor. This is all the time we have for today. This is Ali Nickham along with my partners Justin Borges and Jesse Rosiak. And this has been Sports Talk Radio. Thank you and have a great day. I'm Andrew Wilson and welcome to Sportsnet Nation on 1070 AM. I'm here with Peter Schneweis and Jonathan Day. And today we'll be talking about the Russian doping scandal as well as Yasiel Puig's demotion to um, the minor leagues. Our call-in number today is 508-677-7668. So let's get right into it. The first question, the Russian doping scandal. Now, what do you think the suspensions during the Rio Olympics and beyond should be? Let's go to you first, John. I think the whole country should be banned from the Rio Olympics and because, I mean, it's not just the, the Olympic Committee. It wasn't just, like, Russia doing it for a one-time thing. It was the Russian Olympic Committee that was facilitating this whole entire thing. So therefore, I mean, if you're faking medical records, I mean, that's, that's not respectable. You, you have to be punished for that, and you should have no players in your next... In Looks your next like we thing. have a caller from Santa Barbara. Hello, you're on air. What's your name and where are you from? Hi, I'm Blake from L.A. Hi Blake, how are you? Pretty good today, guys. I just wanted to talk about that topic on the Russian doping scandal. Uh, personally, my opinion on it is I think that the Olympic Committee got it right. Uh, the IOC chose not to implement a blanket ban on the Russian athletes because it was too late. At that point, the information was coming and the Rio Olympics had just been announced. And at that point, it would have been a total tragedy for the Russian team so ban more than 100 athletes. I believe that they got it right. It was too late to make that ban, but changes need to be made down the future and down the line. I, I totally agree with Blake here because I, I believe that since it was the committee, the players, the, I guess you should say the athletes were against it, but they, the, the track and field team gave in. So I think, I personally think it was a good move uh, by what the Rio uh, Olympics uh, said. Thank you for your call and your opinion, Blake. Okay, so let's move on from the Russian doping scandal on to one of, formerly one of the MLB's most exciting players, Yasiel Puig. So Peter, how do you feel about Yasiel Puig's demotion to AAA Oklahoma City? Personally, I, I hate it. I hate that he got demoted. Because here's the thing, he was easily the excited, most excited exciting player to watch in the MLB. Now, I don't get me wrong, he, his statistics, they've gone down ever since his rookie year. But he's, he's a moneymaker. He's a big time moneymaker. It doesn't matter how good or bad you are. It's the same way with Mike Trout, Miguel Cabrera, I guess Derek Jeter back in his day. They're moneymakers, you don't want to get rid of them. So I wish he could stay. He's so exciting to see. I know he's had problems with the uh, with the manager out in LA, so but there's nothing you can do about it. I still think he should stay in LA. Okay, so Peter thinks Yasiel Puig should still be playing on the Los Angeles Dodgers. How do you feel about that? I mean, he's having a little bit of a like down year. I mean, I still don't think it is the completely a right decision by Dave Roberts and the Dodgers committee. But again, it could be really good for Yasiel Puig. You know, you never know if he could go down to the minors, learn some new things, like, oh, this is what I need to do better, and then come back and be an even better player than it he was before. It could be the last time you could see him, though. It could be. It could. I mean, I hope we. I hope. I not. really hope that he doesn't go down there because he's a lot like the Bryce Harper and the Mike yes. Trout. I mean, if Mike Trout has a bad year, you're not going to send him down to the minors. No, you're not. Yeah. You're not going to send him down. Well, thank you both for your perspectives on both topics. That's all the time we have here at Sportsnet Nation on 1070 AM. Thank you, and goodbye. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on the Early Bird Sports Show, your source of all things sports on ESPN. I'm your ho host, Chandler Dugard, here with my co-hosts, Alex Lagamara and Brittany Karens. Today, we will be talking about A-Rod's retirement 
the turmoil caused by Katie's move to Golden State, and Tim Tebow's possible appearance in the MLB. So Alex, do you want to put your opinion on A-Rod's retirement? Well, personally, I think it was a good mo good move on his part. He wasn't putting up the same numbers he was in the past. Um, good, good player statistically. However, I just, I with all the debate going on, I do not feel like he should be in the Hall of Fame. It's just not um, what the Hall of Fame has been a part of. Is not um, Barry Bonds is not in the Hall of Fame. Until Barry Bonds is in the Hall of Fame, A-Rod won't be either. Brittany, I know you think a little differently. Well, while I, while I agree with Alex on that it's time for him to go, it's time for him to retire, I believe he should be in the Hall of Fame. He's ranked fourth in career uh, home runs, third in RBI, he's a 14-time All-Star, three-time MVP. Those are Hall of Fame numbers. I mean, I don't know what more you could want. Stats-wise, I totally agree. Just from a different perspective on a little more well-rounded player, I don't think he fits that, uh, fits that role. Well, Barry Bonds, for example, He's been known, well, people think he's been juicing for all of his career. Arod's only been proven from 2001 to 2003 with the Rangers. So really, even if you take out those years, he still has the Hall of Fame numbers. Okay, we think we've got both of your points across. Brittany, what do you think about Katie's transfer to OKC? And if you have your opinion on this, call us at 347-941-7669 because we want to hear your opinion. Right. Personally, I think it's a bad move for the NBA. KD is putting the Warriors in a position where they're a super team with the Cavaliers, and it's pretty much just the Warriors and the Cavaliers playing for the NBA championship. There's no uh, parity, so it's very lopsided. Understandable, but the, 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 the problem is people are getting so caught up in the feelings and the emotions part of this that they're failing to realize that NBA players aren't in it for all the fans. They're in it for the money and they're in it for the rings. And KD wants both of those things, and he can get both of those things at Golden State where he will not get a ring and will not get as much money as he will at OKC. Well, well, that is true. It's just that I feel like the NBA will lose fans and they'll become uninterested because they'll just think, oh, it's between two teams, so what's the point in me watching my favorite team if I, have, like, if I think they have no realistic shot? But see, the thing is with one, more, with one or two super teams, not every team in the NBA is a super team. That's two teams out of the whole rest of the NBA league that is like that. It's not every team that you're competing against your favorite team that's going to lose. Okay, fair enough. Okay, now let's switch it over to Tim Tebow and his appearance possibly in the switching to MLB. Uh. Well, I know we're running out of time, so quick. I'm just going to say, I feel, I feel that Tebow has no realistic shot. I, I mean, mean, totally agree. Totally agree. He's played Finally, college football. We can agree on something. Finally. Um, he hasn't played baseball since 2005, since so junior year of high school. Granted, he almost got drafted oh, by the like Los Angeles. We have a caller. Thank you for calling. What's your question? Hi. I love you guys' show today. I'm Blake Collins, Tallahassee. Hey, Blake, what's up? So, I had an opinion on your topic on Kevin Durant's trade. Firstly, yes. I believe that the Warriors are going to have some serious chemistry issues next year with Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Kevin Durant. Who's going to take the last shot, and how are they going to work together? Based on the 2010 Miami Heat, it seems like this team is set up for a bust or championship potential. What do you guys think? Who wants to take this? Great. I'll take it. I completely agree. I feel that between Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Kevin Durant, you're not going to know who's going to take the final shot, and that could set up for some turmoil, especially with Steph Curry, who's been known as the leader of the team. However, it also could set up for a lot better potential, whereas you will never have to worry about who's going to take the final shot because you all have very good potential um, in the players that they have on the roster. Thanks for calling, Blake. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay, thank you for joining us today on the Early Bird, Early Bird Sports Show. I'm your host, Chandler Dugard, here with Alex Legamaro and Brittany Karens. Thank you. Hello, this is Around the Nation Sports. I, I, I'm Andrew Diaz, and alongside my partner, Sam Schwartz and Shane Wilk. We have a couple of talks to talk about today. Should Pete Rose be inducted in the Hall of Fame and talk about the NBA, the USA basketball, drop, some of the players dropping out? and some of the NBA salaries. All right, so first we're going to talk about uh, USA basketball. There's been some uh, controversy how players have been uh, dropping out. 
a couple months ago as he, a lot of the players have joined the team in September and joined the practices and come June they're like oh I don't want to go I get that there's diseases going on and uh, uh, the water condition is bad in Rio but you kind of have uh, responsibilities and you join the team don't just quit in June I get that they have family to see and stuff and they have a long season but you're you're committed and uh, you're showing off your country what do you think uh, Shane? Well, that. I definitely support players like Curry and LeBron not joining the USA basketball team just because even though you say they do have a responsibility, they also do have families that they haven't really seen for the whole year, even though there are one game or a couple games in between um, home and away games. That's not really quality time they'd be able to see their family. I mean, LeBron has two kids and a wife, and he only gets two months until practice starts up again. So, yes, they do have a responsibility, but also they do have other priorities that are more above just the sport. Yeah, but like, you, it, then why even join the team in September? You know that, that there's a couple months off, and you know that there's valuable time to spend with your family. Why join the team and just quit? What's the point of that? It's either you're joining the team, you're playing, or you're not joining the team, you don't have to fight. Well, yeah, yeah, that that's definitely true. Um, they also they also might have not known what they got themselves into at the start. Yeah. They also didn't uh, know look, what would have happened. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna. Uh, have a well, looks like we got another caller on. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Blake from Tallahassee, Florida. Hi, Blake. How are you doing? Pretty good today. So I heard Andrew's a big Miami Hurricane, and I wanted to put him on the spot here. Um, I think that Miami right now is in a bit of a crush. They've lost to the Florida State now six consecutive years. They've had a lot of recruiting trouble, despite being in the most talented place, arguably in the country, Miami, for recruiting. How do you think the Miami Hurricanes are going to do with Mark Rick, and when are they going to beat those damn criminals? Well, I think what, what Miami's been doing is obviously they got in trouble with all their scholarships, but uh, I think Miami, they're going to have, have good talent and bring back their scholarships. Obviously, they cut scholarships from uh, different sports. For instance, uh, Florida is a big uh, uh, golf uh, state, and they cut all their scholarships from there. They're going to have a golf team now. And a couple, they did that with a couple of our sports, and they changed it more to uh, football and basketball. Andrew, since you're from Florida, what do you think about the Miami Hurricanes and their scholarships? Uh, I'm not really into so scholarships, but I think they'll be a little bit better than they were last year. Um, I think Brad Kyle is going to be one of the best ACC players in the country. So We appreciate you calling in, Blake. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Take care. All right, so we're going to get into a couple of uh, quick uh, topics real fast. Um, we're going to be going into the Pete Rose Hall of Fame issue. As you can see, uh, everyone knows the Pete Rose story, how he uh, was attempted of maybe uh, gambling against his team and definitely gambling in Major League Baseball as a player and as a coach. But he still has that 4,000 and uh, mid 4,000 hits, and it's, he leads as an all-time hit leader and uh, still not in the Hall of Fame. It's big controversy going on. Uh, what do you think on this? I understand why he hasn't been in the Hall of Fame yet. They found out that he bet um, he bet on baseball when he was a manager and possibly even a player. But if they find out that he bet against his team, then he'll never go in the Hall of Fame just because it could have impacted and influenced the way that he played for his team. Um, or if when he was a manager, if he bet against his team, he might have not played the best relief, or relief pitcher or closer that he could have. Yeah, but it's not steroids. It's not affecting the game in any way. So I, I can see both sides of that, but it's still it's not affecting the game. And he still has that 4,000 hits. And now on to our next topic about. And uh, that, that's going to be going in for us today here on the Nation of, of Sports. I'm Sam Swartz. This is Andrew Diaz and uh, uh, Shane Wilk. Once again, I want to say thank you for listening. Hi, welcome to All Sports Central here with Kyle Grassel, your host and partners David Orlinski and Wyatt and I. First, we are going to talk about the recent topic of Kevin Durant going to the Golden State Warriors. Wyatt, do you think Kevin Durant is a fit for the Golden State Warriors because, he, because the Warriors have had so much success without stars like him? Well, to be honest, I don't see a perennial all-star and offensive general like Kevin Durant really taking a lesser role. Um, I feel even though in Oklahoma he took the most amount of shots other than Westbrook when he stepped in. And that's not counting the amount of shots he took in the 2016 Western Conference Finals when he tried to play hero ball and uh, 
kind of choked and lost it for them. So to be honest, I don't feel he's suited to be a pass first forward or uh, a lesser role player. David, what's your opinion? Um, I'm kind of going to go against on this. I think that KD is a great fit for the Warriors. Um, I think it'll increase the fan base. It's already growing very rapidly. And I think with the amount of star power on that team, I just don't think sharing a ball is going to end up being a problem. Now perhaps the biggest news recently, Alex Rodriguez's re- Alex Rodriguez's retirement. But uh, Alex Rodriguez has 696 home runs, so, uh, f- number four on the home run list, and uh, he is known for using PEDs. Uh, David, what's your opinion on if he should be in the Hall of Fame? Um, well, honestly, honestly, A. Rod only has himself to blame for everything he's endured over his career with PED related. Oh, we have a caller on this issue. Let's take a listen. Hello, what's your name? Hi, my name's Jared Barrow. I wanted to come on you. Uh, should you be in the Hall of Fame or should you not? Um, well, we are just having a debate about this. I believe um, he should be in the Hall of Fame, and I will give my reasons later on the show. Wyatt, what do you think? Well, I believe uh, he should be inducted in the Hall of Fame as soon as Barry Bonds is inducted in the Hall of Fame. And my reasons for this is uh, Barry Bonds does have the most home runs in history for it, and he in my opinion, is a more better all-around player, regardless of the PEDs. So that's our thoughts. What do you think? I think he should not be because I think his PEDs give an unfair advantage of all the players, and I think he should not be in the Hall of Fame. All right, well, thank you for calling in. Listen to the rest of our show. Thank you. All right. Um, anyway, well, I was saying that I think he only has himself to blame for everything he's endured, but um, scapegoating him and other grades for an era of PED use is just really unfair. And most of all, it seems that now the public is starting to turn in A-Rod's favor, which is good. So, um, why? what do you think? Well, like I was uh, telling the caller, I feel Barry Bonds should be the first one to be inducted before um, Rodriguez because... Um, I feel he was a better overall player, and the MLB really um, kind of did him dirty, and he's, he's been accused, just like A-Rod, uh, of using these uh, steroids and PEDs. And according to an anonymous MLB poll, uh, they stated that 9.4% of MLB players in 2014 used any sort of any PEDs. And I feel steroids, honestly, it only gives a player strength it doesn't do anything to enhance their hand-eye coordination or targeting exactly, or timing you of a need perfect swing. As well. So yeah, okay. it's going back to what I was saying. I don't think it's fair to blame him and other people who should be in the Hall of Fame for something that 15% of major leaguers or what, you know, the stat that you said were doing. So. All okay. right. Now, finally, for our uh, latest biggest news is Ichiro Suzuki. For, who first played for the Japanese? For, for who first played in Japan, and then went to the MLB and played for the Mariners, Yankees, and now the Marlins. And he's recently recorded his 3,000th career hit. David, what's your opinion? It should be 3,000, not 4,000. I mean, we know that the um, NPBL is a great league in Japan, but it's a different league. If you count Ichiro's hits, you're going to have to count every other Japanese player who came over to the major leagues too. I mean, why? What do you think? Well, I mean, I kind of disagree on this. Even though he came from a weaker league, I feel since he's the 30th player to do this, it's not a super large milestone. So I don't feel it should be that controversial. Okay, thank you for listening to our show. This is Kyle Grassle, your host, with David Erlinski and Wyatt and I. Good night and thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the fabulous forum on 248 AM radio from Los Angeles, California. I'm your host, Carson Binder. This is my colleague, Jared Merrow, and my other colleague, Nick Pereira. Today, we'll, we will be talking about, is Kevin Durant a traitor? And do the Denver Broncos have a chance to repeat this year without Peyton Manning? Guys, let's dive right into the issue of Kevin Durant. Do you think he's a traitor, Jared? You know, I, I believe he is. And as a wise man once said, if you can't beat him, join him. But I don't think he made the right move. I think he is a traitor to OKC. What about you, Nick? What do you think? You know, I, I do feel that Kevin Durant is a traitor due to the fact that Kevin Durant was drafted 10 years ago by the same franchise. And don't forget, he was 48 minutes away from a birth to the NBA Finals. And I feel like he's taking the easy way out by abandoning their team and forming a super team up there in Golden State. I completely disagree with you guys. I think it's Kevin Durant's career. It's Kevin Durant's life. He can go wherever he wants without worrying about what anybody else thinks. And he's getting his money. He has the best chance to win a championship with the most talented team in the NBA. 
with the reigning MVP Steph Curry, Klay Thompson on the wing, and you got Iguodala defending and Draymond Green, the most versatile player in the NBA. You can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with that. Um, yeah, I get it that yeah. like that you think that he's that he made an NBA basketball decision and he has to win a ring and he's 20 years old in the NBA. It's a basketball decision, but he did let down OKC. He's not the person they said he was going to be. I think that really that he did let him down. And I I do actually feel that he he could have done what what uh, Russell Westbrook did. Uh, Russell Westbrook did stay loyal to the team, uh, signing a three year uh, deal worth uh, approximately 85 million dollars. And I feel like that's what Kevin Durant could have done: stay loyal to the franchise that put so much faith in him to really uh, bring them from the bottom up and um, and to reach a berth to the NBA Finals. So I feel like he. That, that was the wrong decision. Well, Kevin Durant did all he could. He tried and tried. 2012 versus Miami, he, he couldn't get over the top. With James Harden and Russell Westbrook, he gave everything he had to the city, the community. He donated money for the earthquake um, or tornado or whatever it was. But he, he has to do what's right for him, and he cannot just do what everybody else wants him to do. It's his career. Again, it's his life, and it's his decision wherever he wants to go and wherever he wants to play. All right. Um, now, after that issue, we want to talk about the Denver Broncos. Peyton Manning just re has retired after the season, after a Super Bowl victory. Probably the best way to go out of a football career. But do, they, do the Broncos have a chance to repeat this year? Um, what do you think, Jared? Um, I don't think so. I mean, their defense, no doubt, is spectacular. Their defense won Super Bowl last year, and that I think that they're not going to win because they have a good QB to throw to. Okay, so we have a caller on the line. Here he is. Hello, who do we have calling today? Hi, this is Harrison from Orleans Hills. Hey, Harrison. Uh, what do you have to ask? Um, do you really think Mark Sanchez will be the starter for the Denver Broncos as you see Peyton Manning? Yes, but I don't. I, we, there's no way he can live up to Peyton Manning's legacy and, um, and uh, skill level that he provided for the Broncos because he's an all-time great. Tom Brady's, Dan Marino's, Peyton Manning's. You can't replace them. The expectations are going to be lower. They're going to have a worse record, in our opinion, in my opinion at least. And I think they don't have a lot of options at this point. At this point. And like, like Carson said, I mean, how, how do you replace in one of the best quarterbacks of all time? I mean, he has huge, huge holes to fill. And, I mean, it's, I, I don't think it will work out for him. Yeah, I just don't think that Mark Sanchez is going to cut here for the Broncos. The defense is spectacular, but I don't think he's going to cut it and make this team win. Every, every team goes through their ups and downs. You have championships, then you have to go through down, uh, down years, build through the draft and uh, vice, uh, stuff like that. So thank you for calling, Harrison. Uh, I have one more question. OK. What's that? Do you, do you think there's any chance that Paxton Lynch starts for the Broncos this year? The who? Paxton Lynch, their first round pick out of Memphis. I doubt it. I think they're going to give him time to grow and develop and watch uh, Mark Sanchez do his work. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, that's our show, The Fabulous Forum on 248 AM from sunny Los Angeles, California. I'm your host, Carson Binder, it's my colleague, Jared Merrow, and Nick Pereira. Good night, everyone, and thanks for listening. And we're live. This is RDL on AM 570's own National Sports Radio. I'm Lucas Dodson alongside Harrison Rosenthal and Eli Lesser. We're coming to you with some hot topics today. We're going to go with MLS Cup favorites. We have some underrated NBA offseason moves. And we're going to finish off the show with some MLD World, MLB World Series predictions. So we're going to start off with the MLS Cup favorites. Start with you, Harrison. Um, I think for the West Grand Conference, I'm not going to actually go with the Los Angeles Galaxy. I'm going to go with the Colorado Rapids. I think that signing of Tim Howard this summer really just pushes them over the top. So I don't think Brian Rowe could compete with the quality of goalkeeper that Tim Howard is. And I think getting Lato just recently, earlier this week, from the Philadelphia Union, Jermaine Jones has been great for them. I still think they do lack a striker, which is something they could address in the next transfer window in the offseason. But I still think they win the West. East, I honestly don't know at this point. It could be a total throw up between the Philadelphia Union and the New York Red Bulls. But I think I'm going to have to go with the Red Bulls right now just because of the experience of Bradley Wright Phillips and how he can lead that team. And if you'd like to call in, the number is 1-510-501-7716. I'll repeat, 1-510-501-7716. So, Eli? Um, for my Western Conference team, it's a battle, really. I don't want to say FC Dallas will represent as they lost Fabian Castillo. I think there are a couple great teams in that division, 
LA Galaxy, Colorado Rapids. I feel like it's going to be one of those two teams. LA Galaxy, you get the most efficient team. They don't shoot a lot, but they do score a lot. And you get a great defensive team. Colorado, you get the defensive team. And you get a team with great depth. In the Eastern Conference, I'm actually going to go with an underrated Toronto FC. They are the hottest team right now. Sebastian Giovinco has scored. I mean, he has like two hat tricks in three games. So he's been insane. He is the Atomic Ant. And I think Toronto FC may actually have a shot at the MLS Cup this year. And now we're going to move on to some underrated NBA offseason moves. And we're just going to do, let's do one in the Western Conference, one in the Eastern Conference. Harrison, start um, off. My Western Conference one's got to be Lou Deng, the Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah, they had to pay a premium for him, but I think that was the right move that franchise had to make so he can take on a leadership role to help Brandon Ingram mature at the small forward position so Ingram can start in like two or three years. Uh, what about for the Eastern Conference? Eastern? I don't really know. Um, it's definitely not Dwayne Wade to the Bulls, but I'm actually going to have to go Rajon Rondo to the Bulls. I think that was pretty much a cheap replacement as a veteran for them, for Derrick Rose. Rondo can lead a team. He can put up a double-double or triple-double every night. Well, it's just the fact that Jimmy Butler has to lead that team. So I, just like to, to I just like to counter this. Um, but with the Rondo, Wade, Butler, big three, you still have those three. They combined for 133 pointers last season. Compare that to Steph Curry on his own, hitting 402 three-pointers and a league driven by the three-point shot, mm -hmm. I, I don't think they can last, so I don't think that's a great move in my opinion. And I'll start off in the Eastern Conference with Brandon Jennings signing a one-year, $5 yeah. million dollar deal. And this is a league where you have big men like Timothy Mozgov signing for $16 million a year, and you're getting a solid player like Brandon Jennings to back up Derrick Rose in New York. He's also a veteran. He was once a good player, but that ruptured Achilles last season really did mess him up. But Brandon Jennings, expect him to have a nice season off the bench for the Knicks, and that's going to be my pick in the East. In the West, I'm actually going to go with David West for the Warriors. Um, they signed him for a veteran's minimum, which is a great signing because the Warriors had to sacrifice depth when they, when they got Kevin Durant. They lost Andrew Bogut at the center position. They lost Festus Azili. They lost Maurice Spates. They lost Brandon Rush. They lost Leandro Barbosa. But signing David West... He's one of the best bench players in the league. He was, last season actually, he sacrificed money to go to the Spurs on veterans minimum. Um, let's go to MLB predictions for the rest of the season. And it looks like we do have a caller from Del Mar, California. Hello caller, what is your name? Hey, my name is Born in Zari. I'm from San Diego, California. And I'm, I have a couple questions regarding the MLB. So obviously, Past deadline, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of big moves. Um, can you please repeat that? I think we lost a bit of connection when you asked the question. What are your guys' contenders in the NL and the AL? Okay, um, so I'm gonna start off in the NL. I'm gonna have to go with my San Francisco Giants. Um, once they get back from these injuries with Joe Panic, Hunter Pence, Buster Posey, expect them to have a resurgence in play sort of like they did before the All-Star break. I don't know if they can put up the same performance because they swept the Cubs, they beat a series in the Nationals, they destroyed the Dodgers to show they had troubles against the A's, they got swept in a four-game series, but Giants are my team in the NL. Um, in the NL, I have to go with the Chicago Cubs. I think it's finally their time to shine after 100 years. Um, I think this team has the roster, the lineup, the rotation, and now the bullpen with the Rolis Chapman. I think the Cubs are the complete package. And I think for the AL, we can all agree on the Texas Rangers with Hamels and Darvish at the top of that rotation and the addition of Luke Roy. I mean, Texas Rangers are stacked. It's unfortunate that Prince Fielder is retiring. That's all I really have to say. And we're actually out of time. So this is for RDL. I'm Lucas Dodson, Harrison Rosenthal, Eli Lesser. Good night. Hopefully everybody's having a good morning. We are Wake Up LA 109.3. I'm Born in Azari alongside my hosts, Brittany Gellman and Ryan Miller. Today we're going to discuss various hot topics, including Joey Bosa's contract dispute with the San Diego Chargers, Martavis Bryant and his substance abuse issues, and should one and done players be allowed to go straight from high school to the NBA, we'll discuss coming up on the show. So let's start off with Joey Bosa and his contract dispute with the San Diego Chargers. Obviously, Joey Bosa wants his fully guaranteed money paid straight up in offset language in his contract. All right, for me, this is just so much unbelievable disrespect. 
from Joey Bosa to any veteran to anyone that has pretty much had to work for what they've got in the NFL. You do not come in as a rookie, never even putting a game, never even playing a game, not even a preseason game, and requesting money like this and all guaranteed. And now I understand you're a hot shot coming out of college and you think you deserve it and you want it. Everyone wants it, but it's so much disrespect to the veterans on your team and anyone on that team that has had to work. I completely agree with you, Ryan. Joey Bosa is coming in here as a rookie. He's competing against Hall of Famers, and yet he's asking for all this guaranteed money. That's so disrespectful to the rest of the players on his team and the rest of the NFL. As an Ohio State fan and watching him in the past years at Ohio State and what a great defensive end he was, arguably, arguably the best, coming into the NFL, it's kind of tarnishing an image he had already set up. And this brings back memories from the 2004 NFL Draft when the San Diego Chargers selected Eli Manning with the number one overall pick and he didn't want to play for the San Diego Chargers after his father Archie stated that. But let's move on to Martavis Bryant, one of the most all offense of potent offenses in all of football, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Martavis Bryant encountered substance abuse problems many numerous times and I think this is his third offense. So guys, do you, are you allowing Martavis Bryant to coach high school football with children or is he a bad influence? Absolutely not. I think he's a horrible influence on high school students. These high school students are already around substances and drugs and alcohol. He, they already have the influence every day. They don't need the influence of a person that they suppo supposedly might look up to. They don't need that constant reminder of a player that was suspended for substance abuse coaching them. Let's not forget Martavis Bryant came from a bad neighborhood. And, but football is, was his out. Football is his life. He takes it unbelievably seriously. I have no problem with him coaching because I don't, I don't think he's going to go to these kids and, hey, take these things. Smoke weed. Do crack. I have no doubt that he's going to help these kids with football and help them give them an out because that's what he did. I'm just piggybacking off what you said. Like you said, his escape is football. They lived in a tough neighborhood growing up. Many football players had tough uprisings. And Martavis Bryant, although he couldn't get off substance abuse, his love is football, and that's what he needed. So let's move on to college basketball and discuss one-and-done players. For example, Ben Simmons had one of the worst experiences in college basketball history at LSU. Just seemed like he was never having fun, but he had to go to college just because that's the rule now. You have to go to the NBA. What's your guys' thoughts on one and dones? I think they're completely ridiculous. The kids don't care. They're going to college and they're playing sports. That's why they're there. So I, I do think they should go to college, though, because there's so many athletes that once they get out of the NBA or NFL, they don't have a life because they wasted all their money. And, so they, and then they don't have an education to do anything. They should have to go to college for at least two years, if not three. Uh, I believe we have a caller calling in to share his opinion. Hello, hello, Hi. caller. Hi, I'm Blake from San Barbara, California. How are you doing, Blake? Pretty good. Um, I wanted to talk about the one and done scenario. Personally, I think the one and done is the great most part of the championship. So think of all the NBA players that have done one and done. No. They have not done what I've done and have struggled throughout their years with maturity issues. Kwame Brown, Amari Stoudemire, Brandon Jennings, Mandel Moutier, and Dwight Howard, upon many notorious players who have struggled because they didn't have that college experience. I think that one year of college is vital for maturing as a player and growing into an adult and professional athlete. See, that's a good that, point. I think that the one and done player is a very important role and should stay. Blake, Blake, I like your point. Blake, I like your point about saying there's been maturity issues, but think about some of the players you named disregarding Kwame Brown. They become very good NBA players. Amari Stoudemire, like you said, um, even you didn't mention him, but LeBron James came right out of high school. Uh, nothing much to say on that guy, but I think there could be a rule where you can either go straight from high school or at least three years in college because there's no point of just going one year of university. Yeah, I'm, I couldn't agree more. There's no point in going to one year. You either let them leave from high school or you send them three years because putting for one year is unbelievably pointless. All right, thank you so much, Blake, for calling us. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for Wake Up LA 109.3. It's been Born in Azari, and I'm with uh, Ryan Miller and Brittany Gellman. Thank you, guys. Good morning, Tulsa. This is BA Squared Sports News. I am your host, Alex Weissfuss, and this is my colleagues, Ben Pfeiffer and Alex Roth. Some of the topics we'll be talking about today are Alex Rodriguez, if he should go in the Hall of Fame, USA Basketball, and your Super Bowl predictions. First, I'm going to start off with the uh, Super Bowl predictions for, 
for this year. My opinion, I'm going to go with the Carolina Panthers. I mean, that offense is stacked. You have Greg Olson at tight end, who had a bunch of touchdowns last year from Cam Newton, who the quarterback. And then you have Calvin Benjamin, who's out for the year last year, 6'5". He's unstoppable. No one can guard him. I mean, that offense, when it's healthy, is insane. What do you think, Ben? I mean, it's definitely a valid point. The offense is good, but I'm very concerned about the defense. Losing Josh Norman, their secondary is super thin. Their number one cornerback has been Ben Wickery. And I just don't think that's going to get it done. I think a team that definitely could win is the Seahawks. Um, the Seahawks have a very good offense with Russell Wilson, of course. Doug Baldwin had a great end of the year. Um, Jimmy Graham's a great tight end who will probably pick it up this year. And, of course, Thomas Rawls is a, is a young running back. And, of course, they always have the Legion of Boom with Sherman and Kanzler. And So they'll always be a threat. And it looks like we have a caller here. We have a caller here on speakerphone. Calling in. So I assume he will be giving his Super Bowl prediction once again. Hello? Hello, caller. Hello? Hello, caller. Hi, I'm calling about the Super Bowl predictions. Oh, uh, great. Just uh, can we see your name and where you're from? Uh, my name is Chris, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. All right, All right thank you, Chris. Uh, what is your Super Bowl predictions? I think that the New England Patriots are going to win the Super Bowl this year. And uh, can you give us a description why? Um... The reason I think that they're going to win is because after his four-game suspension, I think that Tom Brady is going to come back, and I think he's going to want to prove a point to the league. And the Patriots still have Rob Gronkowski, and they still have a pretty good defense. And so I think that they are going to end up winning the Super Bowl this year. Yes, uh, we know that their offense is really stacked, but what about that defense? Do you think that will be a problem with them in the playoffs? I don't think it will be a huge problem because their pass defense is pretty good with Malcolm Butler and Logan Ryan uh, as cornerbacks, and their pass rush is still pretty good, even without Chandler Jones, who they traded to Arizona. All right, right, thank thank you. you. Thank you very much, caller. All right, now let's shift to USA basketball. And as we know, one of the favorites to win the Olympics every year is USA. But this year, can any team stop them? What do you guys think? I mean, honestly, um, there is really no team that can stop them. But if one team has a chance, I think it's Spain. I mean, the Gasol brothers, Jose Calderon, I mean, that's kind of a big three, I guess you could say that. Um, but uh, I, honestly, it's probably just USA. They're going to win gold. What do you think, Alex? I don't think anyone can stop them, but probably the next best team is uh, Lithuania or Australia. Because Australia, I mean, they have NBA players such as, like, Patty Mills, um, Andrew Bogut, who's a NBA champion with the Golden State Warriors. Lithuania, they have Jonas Valanciunas, great center for the Raptors, and uh, Arvidas Sabonis' son, Damanis Sabonis. He's a rookie for the yeah. Thunder. So those are probably the two. I would be surprised if USA gave up more than 20-point lead in any games. So let's stick to our final topic. Should Alex Rodriguez be in the Hall of Fame? I think he should. I think he's done enough after his steroids to prove that he deserves to be in it. All of his teammates love him, the organization love him. And he's old, he's holding the Yankees back, but I think it's his time and he should be a Hall of Famer. Um, I completely, 100% disagree. Um, Alex Rodriguez, he's taken too much steroids in his career. And I mean, I, I, in like 2011, I mean, he, he had some like 20 home run seasons past that, but I don't think Alex Rodriguez has enough. I mean, he hasn't been playing that well and He's retiring soon, so he's probably not going to make it. His last game is soon. His last game is this Friday against the Rays. What do you think, Alex? I don't think he should be in the Hall of Fame. He hasn't done enough after his days on the Rangers, and those were his Roy days mainly. And, um, yeah, he's not good anymore. He has to retire earlier than he expected, and it's not resume to be in the Hall of Fame. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up here at 710 WR Tulsa. We'll see you next time. Are NBA centers dying? Is Tom Brady's suspension justified? And should A-Rod go to the Hall of Fame? Welcome to BBC Sports USA on AM666. I am Chris Pollock, along with Brett Barish and Ben Davidoff. And these are the three controversial topics that we are discussing today. And we'd love for you guys to call in to 213-200-5791. So let's start with the NBA. And a question for you, Ben. Are NBA centers going extinct? Well, it depends. I think really you have to look at how centers are being used in today's game. Most centers today are used more actually as power forwards, as guys that face the basket and can shoot 
from the mid range and even sometimes from the three point line if you look at what Draymond Green is doing and some guys that can guard multiple positions. But in terms of looking at the actual center, the true center, like the like Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell, Shaq, those kinds of players, I don't think they're dying out, but they're slowly becoming less and less more of a of a necessary factor to a championship caliber team. Here we have a caller. Hello, caller. Can you please state your name and where you're from? Hi, my name is Jack Lyman, and I'm from DC. Uh, so, what do you think? Are NBA centers dying out? Well, I would have to say that I think that true centers are dying out, but I think what's happening is that they're evolving. The like, only one that would be left is um, probably the Andre Jordan, that's the only true center left that's good. But you have to look at other players like Anthony Davis, who can now shoot three, and even Andre Drummond is starting to get better. So, I mean, I just think that they're evolving rather than. And it's not like all that. It's just better position itself is doing these things. Okay. Very interesting. Actually. Very interesting. Yeah, Thank nice. you for calling. Let's move on to our next topic. Um, is Tom Brady's suspension justified? Let's start with you, Brett. I think it should not be justified because he's been he did this for uh, he did this on purpose. Like he deflated footballs before his AFC championship game against the Colts. And when someone accused him of doing it, he immediately destroyed his cell phone, which made it more real, uh, more predictable that he did it. So the four-week suspension should stay, and I think it will be played into the NFL. I disagree. I don't believe that the four-week suspension should be upheld. Uh, in, uh, in the lower court decision that the NFL appealed and got turned around. The judge said, which I agree with, that the punishment was draconian for a crime that even with a 233-page report, they didn't find any concrete evidence. They only said it was probable. So I don't think that they should be suspending Brady for four games. I think that's much too large of a punishment if there should even be a punishment. Also, I think that the NFL is trading Brady unfairly just because he's a member of the New England Patriots, because the Patriots are just so good that the NFL doesn't like them being this good. Also, uh, Peyton Manning, when he was accused of using performance-enhancing drugs, the NFL came out with one paragraph about it. One paragraph. And when Tom Brady does something, they come out with 233 pages on it. Cool. I think that should show you that the NFL is just a little tiny bit biased towards Peyton Manning. And deflating footballs is a practice that quarterbacks have been saying has been going on for years. And um, people have been caught at doing it for the last four or five years, and nobody's, it hasn't been a big story until, of course, it's the Patriots. So if this was anybody else instead of Tom Brady, you wouldn't be hearing anything about this. Well... I think that one thing that you have to really look at is the reason why, uh, going back to that 233 page report and that it's probable, I think that that was mostly because the reason they didn't have evidence was because Tom Brady had destroyed it. He destroyed his phone, so there was no possible way to obtain evidence. Okay. Thank you for tuning in to AM666 and BBC Sports USA. For Brett Barish and Ben Davidoff, I'm Chris Pollock. Welcome to this nationally syndicated broadcast of USA Sports Today. I'm Roy Bielostowski, joined by Will Wiggleman and Noah Holber, our panelists. We'll discuss the day's top stories. We're live from sunny Los Angeles on ESPN 710 Radio. First off, Alex Rodriguez announces his, announces his retirement effective Friday. He'll play, they'll play the Tampa Bay Rays at home. Should he make the Hall of Fame or the Hall of Shame? Well, I think that Alex Rodriguez, he took the PEDs, he did it multiple times, and he lied about it. I think he should definitely be in the Hall of Shame. I think that he uh, should not be recognized with players who have done great things uh, without PEDs. I think that he should just, um, I don't think he should be able to be recognized like that. And call in 503-577-3837. It's the number to talk to us on the show. 
And yeah, I think the Baseball Writers Association of America, they're real people, and Alex Rodriguez obviously disliked by many people in the country for his lying and use of PEDs. So w when they're voting, they're thinking, we don't like this guy anyways. They covered him in the media, covered his antics throughout his entire career when he left the Rangers for the Mariners. Well, I see it the other way. Al Rodriguez is a very talented baseball player. He took the PEDs. Maybe, yeah, he could hit the ball a little farther. He could run a little faster. But he is a player of many, many skills. He's really good at baseball. He played very well for the Yankees. I think he should be in the Hall of Fame just because of his skill level and his great baseball talent. We're expecting a call. Call's coming in. We welcome Jack Weinman to the show. It says he's from Maryland. Jack, hello. Hi. How are you? We're pretty good. We're discussing Alex Rodriguez. What's your opinion on him? Um, I'm not going to be in the whole thing. We have to put Barry Bonds. I mean, if you want to put Alex Rodriguez in the whole thing, then you might as well put players like Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire. Um, what do you think on like about what the sports writers talk about him? Do you think they're gonna vote him into the Hall of Fame in regards of the PEDs or just because he is not liked by many? I think it's gonna be because of the PEDs. I mean, a lot of people don't like Tom Brady, but he's still a Hall of Famer. We all know that. So I think that's not because of the PEDs. He cheated. And say again, do you think he should be in the Hall of Fame or not? No, not. All right, thanks for calling, Jack. Thanks for calling. Now we'll turn to the Olympics for a really quick update on Michael Phelps. Do you think he will be back for another Olympics after winning his 19th gold? I think he'll be around for one, maybe two Olympics, but not as a gold medal swimmer. He's getting up there in age. He's 31. He's been through a lot in the rehab. And um, I'm reading this statistic that some... Uh, some player named Lee Claus from South Africa uh, lost to Phelps in the 200 butterfly event by less than one second. And that was four years ago. So I'm pretty sure that uh, next Olympics in 2020, uh, 2022, um, Phelps will go down to a silver or bronze competitor. I think that he does have a chance in the 4x100 freestyle because the Younger American swimmers are very talented, and I think that he will still have enough left in the tank to at least give him a chance to get gold. And we have to cut to commercial break. I'm Roy Bialystowski. I'm Noah Holliver. And I'm Will Wiggleman. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back in 90 seconds. Hello listeners, this is 97.2 AM, and this is Glass of Wineman with Sam Governor, Gabe Glassman, and Jack Wineman. What we'll talk about today is, is Ichiro Suzuki or Pete Rose the all-time hit leader? Does Le'Veon Bell deserve to be suspended for four games because he missed a drug test? Is Russell Westbrook the next Kobe Bryant? If you want to turn, tune in, call 818-804-0800. Now about Ichiro Suzuki or Pete Rose, me... I honestly think any hit is a hit. Ichiro has gone way more hits than Pete Rose. I think he's the all-time hit leader. Um, I think that I would have to agree with you. He, Ichiro came in, he had a lot. People don't know how hard it is to get a hit in Japan. And also, he came into the league in like his 30s, and he got 3,000 hits in his career total. That's amazing. He joined like a, a very prestigious club by doing that. It's baseball. It's the same exact sport. Even though he, even though Ichiro played it in Japan, he and, and he also played in the MLB. He still surpassed that how many how much how many hits Pete Rose had, and he should deserve to have the title. Also, people don't realize there is a lot of good pitchers who came out of Japanese leagues. There's you Darvish, Masahiro Tanaka, and many others. And it looks like we have a caller. Hello. What's your name, and where are you from? Hi, uh, this is Will from New York. Uh, I'm calling about Le'Veon Bell. Oh, Le'Veon Bell. Oh, he's been suspended four games for missing a drug test. What do you think? Well, I I am a diehard Pittsburgh Steelers fan, but I do think he should be suspended because it is his 
responsibility to tell the NFL um, uh, his new contact information, um, which I, I hear that's that's why he was uh, that's why he missed it. It's up to him to tell the NFL that, and um, since he didn't, that's why the NFL. Uh, was not able to get in touch with him. So I think it is his fault. And well, don't you think that um, even if a player makes an honest mistake, he should be suspended four games? Uh, yes, I do believe the suspension is a bit long. I would, I would cut it to two, personally. But um, uh, I think it wasn't... I think he should be responsible, though, for uh, telling the NFL... Uh, what they need to know and give all right. them all Thank the you. information. All right. I would have to agree with him, even though I am a Ravens fan. I do think that he should be he should be suspended, but not for of the full four games. Because, like you said, he is responsible for telling the NFL that. But that is a bit long. That's the same as Tom Brady, who is controversial for you know cheating in a playoff game, and he's getting the same suspension as a guy that forgot to tell out. NFL that he changed his contact information. Well, I, I just think it's an honest mistake. I don't think he should be suspended. I think he should pay a fine. For something like this, I think it only deserves a fine at the max. All right. Like, it's really I not can, that big of a deal. I can, see, I can see why that Le'Veon Bell is being punished because he missed a drug test. That's, like, mandatory at, at some cost. But but for him to have a four-game suspension, the same exact punishment as Tom Brady for his def- deflate gate in, in the Super Bowl – which led it, which led him to, to winning the Super Bowl. I don't. I just don't think Le'Veon Bell deserves to be suspended. Yeah, I think if Le'Veon Bell does get suspended, it will ruin the Steelers' chances of ever winning this year because they need Le'Veon Bell to to have a strong running attack. I think Daniel Williams is good, but Le'Veon Bell just doesn't. Le'Veon Bell is just Le'Veon Bell. You just can't replace him. So, do you think that Russell Westbrook will be the next Kobe Bryant? Yes, I think I do. He's been an elite scorer. He has been clutch. And now he finally doesn't have Kevin Durant stepping in his way. What Kobe did best was when he was on his own. And that was because he's able to take control and do what he does. I, I, I just like, I think that someone else should be the new Kobe. But Kobe is Kobe, and no one can ever be the new Kobe. Russell Westbrook's too young to, to be the next rising star. But if anything, LeBron's the next rising star. I have to say this. There, Westbrook has not accomplished anything close to Kobe Bryant. Tell me, how many how many um, championships has he won? How many? How, how many has had? He's won zero. And how many have Kobe Bryant won in his career? Five. Uh huh. Do you see the difference there? Yeah, I do. That's like, well, that's all we have to talk about. We'll talk to you next. This is Glass of Wineman with Sam Gumner, Gabe Glassman, and Jack Wineman. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Sports Alarm. Good morning, good morning. I'm the host, Dylan Johnson, with my partners, Jack Chesting and Joram Hirsch. Today, we have two different topics to talk about. We have Puig in the minors <clears throat> and the Hall of Fame game. Start off with the Hall of Fame game, guys. What do you think about the, the weather, the turf issues? Well, I mean, who, don't the, F, doesn't the FDA, like, test these substances that they'll put on like grass so wouldn't they know wouldn't it harden up beforehand if something happened like that and also the nfl has to own up to this embarrassment they can't just let it slide this is not imagine the opportunities these are let down for the new players coming in well they do they you're right they do need to apologize they need to apologize for all the money that they've given that they've sold for the the people have sold tickets, buy tickets, and they also need to apologize about not having a Hall of Fame game this year. They need to make up a big time next year. What about you? Um, I just think it's embarrassment to the NFL. It's honestly a, a huge embarrassment to the NFL. You can't have a correct field stadium. You can't have the field. It has to be perfect. It has to be perfect. Imagine the letdown of football fans. They haven't seen football for months. It's the longest offseason in almost, I think, any sport. And they had a, they were waiting so long. They were so excited. The Colts, Packers, two great teams, and the fact that they couldn't play uh, an NFL game due to the really stadium is uh, not very good. It's disappointing. And Here, we have someone calling in. Hello, hey. what's your name? Where are you from? Hi, this is Blake from Tallahassee, Florida. Oh, hi, All right. Blake. What's the topic hey, of interest? Guys, I wanted to talk to you about. Dodgers. Oh. Um, Yasiel is a guy that came into the MLB, had an unbelievable 
started his career batted around 480, was hitting tons of homers, and uh, a lot of people thought he was going to be the next Ricky Henderson. Unfortunately for him, uh, he had some weight issues, and he's been struggling the last few years. Now he's going down, demoted to the minor leagues, a lot of trade book rumors swirling around. Uh, what's your opinion on Yasiel Puig? Well, Yasiel Puig... He's pretty. He's not that great anymore. He's not major league material. This is the reason why he's in the minors. Unfortunately, the Dodgers couldn't trade him for someone else, so that, of course they had to demote him to the minors. Honestly, think he's not major league material. And if he were to be major league material, it wouldn't be for the Dodgers. It would be some other team who would really need to use him. I feel like he still has some chance, still has some chances to develop in the minors. I mean, he's still somewhat of a young player, and he still has a lot of talent to him. So I feel like take, sending him to the minors allows the Dodgers to keep him at in their team, so they can use him later in the year. Yeah, I think uh, Yasiel is a very young prospect. He's uh, 25 years old and simple attitude, good playing. So that's, he just needs to get his attitude together, number one. He needs to hit better, focus, and realize this is not a game I can't be messing around. I can't be getting into fights as far as I need to do this sport. That's correct, but you still have to look at his playing. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for calling. All right. But really, you do have to look at his playing. Okay, he's not very good at batting. All right, his batting average is dipped down. He's dipped down in defense as well. He has an amazing arm. But other than that, really nothing else. But thank you guys so much for watching. This is Sports Alarm. I'm the host, Dylan Johnson, with my partners, Jack Chastang and Jordan Hirsch. Thank you very much. Good morning, Gus. Goodbye. Good morning, goodbye. Okay.